a um, couple things. Um, on the break, a couple of people came up and they wanted me to do mediumship um, and connect with the spirits of their loved ones. And I would love to do that, but it wasn't my plan for tonight when I was first asked that. Um, and the reason is because I did so many events this week that you just don't want mediumship, you want credible mediumship, you want credible information coming to you, you want credible insight. And I never put myself in a position unless I can give that information to you. And so inside of that way, like I said, when I first did this, I knew I had a long week beforehand. And so speaking tonight um, is going to be what I'm going to be doing. But however, on November 12th, going to Circle of Miracles, I will be doing mediumship there that night, followed by Yon. So, in your, in your yeah. afternoon. In the afternoon. What did I say? Yeah. 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 I think it's like a three and a half hour event that, um, that we're doing. Two to five, three? Oh, cool. Three and a half, three. Okay, so, let me share, um, let me share a little bit more insights um, with everyone um, about themselves and about their journey. And you know, I've always, and you know, when I, I've been learning all this, and I'm a student of all this, and I know that there's been a lot, there's so many different pieces of information that you might receive outside, and I've come and met so many wonderful people, and they've shared with me their insight and what they do. The most important thing I can share with people is that there's a lot of misinformation out there also. The information that you want for your own life, you should see validation. You should see actual changes. Your words should be different. Your pace of life should be different. You should be getting insight all the time. You should be in a state of peace. There's more than just a state of peace, but there should be more of that. Your relationship should improve. Your diet's going to improve because you're following a guidance in such a faithful way that's coming through your spirit, but that's what happens. A shift happens inside of your life. And so if you don't see that, it's not because somebody purposely duped you, it's just because a lot of times people say that they have the truth and they don't. There is no greater way of knowing for yourself than whether or not you are on the right life path if you see things getting better for you in your life. And that's when I started out doing this. I didn't want to learn any of this. Unless I saw the proof. I, like I said, if, if the God really existed, if higher wisdom really existed, then I should see a shift in my life that I did something I did something, and I did something in such a way where I changed something where I should be able to see that proof. And I stay, I stay that way to this day. So I just want to give you insight about, about that. You know, the, one of the things that you don't want to do is say you live your life foolishly. Remember, you know. You know the truth. You know how things are supposed to go. You just have to have confidence in you want to learn to be the truth. And you never, I never, also too, you never compare yourself with other people. Everybody's a work in progress. My job is to help someone become, to do even more than what I can do. Not that I'm doing something special, but that's how we want to look at it. Our job is to make people greater than us. And then those people help other people become greater than them. And then those people help other people become greater than them. And that's when you see the shift inside the world that everybody's talking about. So it's important. Yeah? So you can see into the future a little bit? Yeah. Can you see what's going to happen with Trump and North Korea? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, actually, yes. So let me share, let me share uh, a story, a story um, about, do I think that something's going to happen in North Korea where we're going to get into a major war? I don't see a major war in North Korea. I see something happening where they back down. I'm not saying there's not going to be some kind of conflict. It's not going to be, but it's not going to be the major war that the media is portraying it today. That's what I'm going to say in my insight for that. So let me share this with you based on what you just shared with me. Personal stories, right? Proof of validation. So a woman comes and she wants a personal reading. Um, and this happened, this happened about three years ago. And in that reading, information comes to her about family members. And she's going, yes, yes, yes. And, you know, names are coming through. And, Experiences, how they passed, they bring back memories. And then all of a sudden I share with her about um, someone uh, named Sean. And I said, there's a man here, he says his name is Sean, and he's saying that he was hit by a car when he was 19 years old. And she goes, I have no idea. You know, that doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. And I said, yes it does. And she says, no it doesn't. I said, well write it down. I said, put a question mark around it. And then now she's writing it down on her bed. <coughs> Spirit says, you tell her that in the future,
teacher, she's going to go to her job, and she's going to have to train someone, a new person. I'm connected to that new person. <coughs> so I give her the information. She goes on her way. Two years later, two years later, she comes to a gallery of mine. Now, I haven't seen her in a long time. So she comes to a gallery of mine with someone else. I don't even know they're there. And it's a limited seating gallery. It's like eight people. And sure enough, as I'm turn to this one girl, I said, there's a kid here, or a guy here, his name is Sean, he's 19 years old, and he says he got hit by a car, but he says he's not family to you, but he's like a brother to you, so he's got to be the good friend. She starts crying, yes, more information comes out. After the gallery, that girl comes up to me along with another lady. The lady then tells me the story, which I came to you two years ago. A week ago, this girl comes into my office at work, and they said, you're training this new girl. And just the other day, she came to work, and she was upset. I asked her, what's, what's wrong with her? She goes, well, my, my friend Sean died today, and I'm upset because he was like a brother to me. And she goes, well, how did he pass away? He goes, he was 19, and he died, and he got hit by a car. She goes, I'm bringing you to someone. And then she brought her to the gallery. But it was a cool story. It was a cool story to me because the spirit knew two years in advance. Two years that this girl was going to come into, into this girl's Going down. What I always share from this experience is don't minimize your spirit. Don't minimize God that created all this, and don't minimize what your spirit is capable of doing. What our brain thinks is special to our spirit, your spirit goes, it's not special. Also, the knowledge that comes through your spirit can be connected to any knowledge in your life, seeing future events. It can be seeing something that's going to satisfy a need, future events, future tragedies. It can see something as simple as what house you're supposed to buy, or where you're supposed to buy your car, or where you're supposed to go on vacation. Everything is meaningful to your life, every single thing. It can also see past lives, what people refer to as past lives. And I said, you know, when it was first shared with me, I said, how does that make sense? And they said, because you only have one life, And I said, what does that mean? I said, you're a spirit. Your spirit goes inside of a physical body. That body has a name. You have experiences in that body, your spirit comes out, same life, goes into a different body, has names, has experiences, that body has a different name than the first one, then it was in there, goes into a third one. And it started forming me, I started going back in time and going, you know, when my spirit was first created, there was no name connected to it. There was no identity. And maybe I'm supposed to get back to that identity, being undefined, being no identity at all. Maybe I really am the spirit of God. Maybe if that's true, when my spirit goes from body to body, and the bodies have different names, it's only one life for your spirit. And so I'd get in front of people, and I would, uh, people would go to a past life impression, and they would say, all this stuff came through, and I said, don't tell me a thing. Sit down. And let me sit. And all I did was communicate with their spirit. And their spirit said, back in this life, I was this old. This is what happened to me. These are the names connected. I was in a different life over here. This is what, and it was the coolest thing. And when I when it came out, and I shared all the information with the person, they said everything came true on my past life regression. So they went to a certified past life regressionist, somebody who was capable of doing it, and all the information was the same. And I've done this three times so far. And what was cool to me again validated what they shared with me. You're a spirit. There is no such thing as death. You have experiences. You have to prove yourself. There's a faith. You can't, and the thing about knowledge is that you can't take in knowledge and then remember knowledge or repeat knowledge with your brain and expect yourself to be spiritually centered. It doesn't work that way. It's your brain repeating knowledge. You have to be the wisdom that you say that you are. Whatever it is that you would tell other people or how wisdom works, be that way every single day. Verbalize. Make sure your words match what you represent or the wisdom that represents to you inside. Change your words around. Let them go and speak the truth. There's a change that takes place, and there's a faith on your part that is very, very important to your spiritual growth. Love. Everybody, everybody talks about love. Everybody talks about the communication of love. How many people can express it, what it is? Love is great. Love is divine. Love is this. Love is communication. Love is different than wisdom. It's two different things. Love is a communication, and that's different than unconditional love. Unconditional love is also a communication. It's two different things. A lot of times when we're loving to someone, what love always equates to is being spiritually helpful. So if you give someone $100, or you give someone a brand new car, you're not being spiritually helpful. People might love the fact that they got a car, but you're not being helpful to their spirit. It's not something that 
It's not something that they're going to say that, oh my God, you touched me inside of here. When you do something in a, in a loving way, sometimes we want things in return for that love. We want people to like us. We want people to appreciate us. I'm going to make you dinner tonight. I'm going to go and buy you a present. I want you to respond well. I want, I want, I want, I want. And when you live your life based on what you want, when you try to get what you want in return, you're not being unconditional. Unconditional love is being spiritually helpful to something, to someone, and you don't want anything in return for it. They can badmouth you, they can put you down, they can do whatever they do. It's unconditional love. And so that's where I realized how that communication was coming to me. When I said it's based on inspiration, it was unconditional love. I didn't have to follow it. I can't even think, tell you how many times in the, in the, in the past where I doubted God, I doubted a higher existence, I didn't pay attention to my spirit, if that's what was really created, and that's who I would really want, or that's who I really am, or was, or am. I can't tell you how many times I doubted all that. Curse God. You don't really, uh, you don't exist. Um, I felt abandoned in life. I got depressed. And inside of that way, when I started bad-mouthing God, when I finally opened myself up to get that higher wisdom, I didn't feel that higher wisdom go, oh, no, 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 you bad mouth me. You put me down. You curse me out. How many times, Rich, you turned to other people for advice, but even though I was communicating through you and you didn't listen to me, you didn't show faith in it, that's not what happened. It was almost like I've been waiting for you. I've been building my life, I've been working on myself, and I've just been waiting for you. So I learned how to be that way to other people. I realized that everybody's a work in progress, that everybody's finding their way in life. People are going to want things, because that's how we're taught. But if I'm conditional, if I'm unconditional in my own love, I don't want to think for people. I just want to be helpful to their life. The main thing, I want to be unconditional in my own love for myself. I want to learn how to love my own self first. I want to learn how to devote myself to my own life. If, if I'm on an independent journey and it's unique and everybody else is on their own independent journey, my job isn't to interfere with somebody else's independent journey. They have to learn for themselves. We empower one another when we inspire people. We empower them that they can do it themselves. It's not something that can just be divinely given. We actually have to make an effort in our own life. Yes. I was so grateful. You were talking about giving gifts, not necessarily being uh, spiritually helpful. Yeah. Say, I'm a card, and that's give them $100. Are they, could they, are they spiritually detrimental, or are they just neutral, which is not spiritually based? Correct. So, you know, when people talk about, um, when people, you know, I said to you, pure evil does not exist, right? It's like if you look back at, at uh, darkness. Darkness doesn't exist in the presence of light. There's no such thing as darkness. It's just a lack of light. Same thing with coldness. There's no such thing as cold. It's just a lack of heat. It's the same thing with love or evil. There's no such thing as pure evil. There's just a lack of love in things. But there's always love. There's always heat in something. There's always light in something. And so inside of that way, what was your question again? Uh, when, when one is given a gift, a car, hundred dollars, is is it not? You said it's not necessarily spirit or, or it's not spiritual. No, is it spiritually detrimental? Is what I'm saying. Or is not it, detrimental at all. It's just a lack of. It's the lack of love that that, um, that you can express to someone. Remember, love isn't something you can give someone. I can't give you love. You have love already. I can't give you something you already have. Everybody has, has a spirit, and there's a love, there's a natural love for doing the good thing, doing the loving thing, doing the doing the truthful thing. We already have a love inside. We can generate or influence one another based on the love that we're growing inside of us, and people can feel it, but they still have to they still have to grow that themselves. They have to learn how to boost that energy up um, themselves. If I, if I give someone a car for their birthday, because I have a lot of money, and I give them a car for their birthday, they might expect a present on their birthday, <coughs> right? And they might go, oh my God, you know, dad's got you know, $100 million, bought me a car. I, I get that, you know, it's on my birthday. But then all of a sudden, if I give a car to someone who needs a car, and I satisfy a spiritual need that they want to use the car in order to go to the job, to provide something with the family, and I give it to them. Even though I'm giving cars in two different areas and doing the same exact thing, one is more loving than the other because one is more spiritually helpful. And so that's what we want to pay attention to. If I give, if I give Michelle, the person I'm married to, a dozen roses on her birthday, she goes, oh, thank you very much, it's great. But if I'm walking around one day and all of a sudden I'm thinking about her, and I go out of my way and buy her a single flower, and it doesn't even have to be a rose. And I come home and I said, I was just thinking about it today. And I stopped, and I stopped everything I was doing, and I wanted to buy you a flower just to let you know I was thinking about you. That has a bigger impact than that whole dozen roses. 
it all has to do about being sincere in expressing yourself in a spiritually helpful way. Just supporting one another is loving. Nourishing one another is loving. Um, uh, encouraging one another is loving. Being compassionate towards one another is loving. But if I'm compassionate, supportive, nourishing, uh, nurturing to someone, uh, and nourishing to someone, I'm even more loving. And so you want to understand how love works. Love is an energy. And the more we express ourselves in a sincere way, we're being spiritually helpful to someone, because we are a spirit, the more impact it has on our life. And then more people that want to change it and, and add it on to their life. They want to go and duplicate it. They want to go and pass it on. So it has to do with a sincere act on your end to be spiritually helpful to someone, to add to their life in some way. Yes? Is there some way you can, with the group, do something to empower us or to get us in touch with our spirits or the name of the spirits or more love or more energy? Can you do like a group, any kind of meditation, exercise, I don't know what you call it, but you know, the whole group can experience something new? So, what I'm sharing with you is my process of what I went through, right? And so the best thing I, you can do is, or I suggest that you do, is if the words resonate with you, if it makes sense to you, that I never meditated, I still don't meditate to this day, even though, even though meditation is quieting of your brain, what I learned to do is that I learned to quiet my brain, but I looked at it as shifting my spirit forward. And then what I looked at it is that if I shifted my spirit forward, how long can I keep it there? And then so what I did was I would walk, I would stay inside of my inside of my house, and I would see if I could see what the future news was. I would go to I would go to my work, um, and I could see what I'm supposed to do during the day. I would go to the store, I would go to a different Acme or a shop, right, and go on purposely going for pickles or whatever the case may be, and go, can I know where it's at before I get there? And I would just go and. And every single day, I would demonstrate and demonstrate. It's not about being guided. It's about showing faith in yourself because that's what's recognized in a truthful way. We can't lie to that higher wisdom. I can, I can put you in a meditation state, you already know how to do it. I can explain to you the process that I went through, and if you do it every single day on your own, you're actually demonstrating a way of life that is showing faith, that you have a spirit, and then you want that higher guidance. I can't do that here now. I can explain to you that you're supposed to do it. Is that a group process where we can like, see what we should be doing tomorrow, not just what we could be doing tomorrow? Just so we have some kind of experience of guidance for us. And then we are done. Are you, 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 want, you want insight about your life? Not mine, the group. Like, like you know, I mean, Go to him, go to her, and just No, not individually. The whole group, the whole. Do it all. I think that's what I just shared. I think I just shared that when you wake up tomorrow morning, the first thing. That's not what I'm asking. So, I'm, so here's the best I can do with this one. So. A group meditation, a group process. So we need to have our own unique experience of the spirit. Okay. No, 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 no. Listen. I think that's what I'm trying to share with you. Have you done group meditations before? Yeah. Tons, right? Of course. Okay. So it's nothing that you're all valuable. So you, all valuable. It's nothing. It's nothing that you haven't done before, right? Oh no, there's always there's plenty to learn. So let me share with you. Has anybody explained the process about your spirit developing your brain in order to? I don't know how to explain it. I want to experience it. Oh. It's a very different oh, person experience. Riding a bike, talking about a bike. So when you. So let me just share it with you. Here's here's what I've learned. If, if, you, if you learn, if, if you have to listen to your words. It's not what I want. I don't want it that way. I want you to do it this way, Rich. And that's what I was talking about, being unconditional in our love. And when you're unconditional in your love, you never want anything in return. You become grateful. You sit down and you listen to life in such a way, and you go, maybe this is what I spiritually need. If Rich is really being inspired with knowledge, maybe it's not what I mentally want. I've been doing that for my whole life. Maybe Rich, if Rich is really connected in the way that he's saying, and he really has this knowledge, then maybe I should just open myself up to that knowledge, because maybe there's something that he's going to, going to satisfy a spiritual need that my brain can't comprehend. So that's why I always pay attention to what I mentally want. I always said that in such a way that if, if God wants to inspire me with knowledge, 
and maybe to change my life, that if someone else is connected in that way and has that knowledge coming through them and they're proving it in their life, then I'm just going to sit and listen. I'm going to sit and listen in some way because maybe I'm going to walk away with something different than how I approached life before. Maybe he's going to say something that's going to resonate inside of me. And so inside of, that, inside of that way, having the knowledge of what you go through allows you then to, every single day of your life, to wake up and say, I'm going to pay attention to me being inspired. Because remember, when people do things for us, you're not growing your spirit. If you repeat words of what you've heard, read before, you're not growing your spirit. It's a demonstration of your level of wisdom every single day. It's about faith. It's about trust. Anyway, that's what I've learned. That's when I've seen my life shift in the way that it shifted. It's me not wanting anything. That goes back to giving up soul control or not trying to be controlling in life. It goes up about giving up soul ownership over yourself, allowing yourself to be inspired. It's actually a process that we, that we go through. Let me share just a little bit, um, hopefully it'll be some kind of education, about the difference between your, 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 uh, your thinking brain and your mind. It's two different things. What about the heart? That's all I care about the heart. So let me share with you this. So when I started doing, when I started having conversations with people on the other side, and then when I started getting to the paranormal, and I would actually record the conversation. So on a digital recorder, you could hear them. And so a lot of people talk about the heart, the heart, the heart. But I can tell you those voices, there was no brain connected to them. There was no heart connected to them. There was no lungs connected to them. They had no arms. They had no blood. They had nothing. And they spoke perfect English. They spoke perfect English, or they spoke different languages, they had an intelligence, they answered my questions. And so inside of that way, it's, they would actually share the name with me first, I would say it out loud, and then later on I would say, now can you say it in the recorder, and they would repeat the same name. So I got to see the intelligence. What I've learned is that it's about love. It's not about your heart. It's not about your lungs or your brain, it's about love. Their ability or my ability to communicate with them is something to do with the communication of love. And so when we people, we talk about being heart-centered or lung-centered, you're going to get to a point where you're not going to be part of your physical body anymore. There is no heart. There is no lungs. There is no brain. So when our words represent this in life, we're getting away from the truth. It's your spirit. And inside your spirit is a divine presence. And inside that presence is unconditional love because that's a communication that divine presence has created this world when we focus on that, when we walk every single day, and we pay attention and we shift our perspective about life, that's what changes us spiritually. You can meditate every single day. I know people have been meditating for years and nothing's changed. <laughs> nothing's changed about them at all. But I can tell you, I can stand in front of people and get connected to their loved ones. We see medical imbalances. We see past lives or future events. And I never meditated. I never went into that process. I just learned to quiet my brain and shift my spirit. So when you quiet your brain, that's not the important part. Quieting your brain is a lot of people do in meditation, but they don't shift their spirit forward. They don't show faith in the communication that comes to it. Don't have a fear of being inspired with knowledge. I promise you, there's no pure evil. There's different sources of spiritual energy that's based on love. When you get connected to a higher source of wisdom, it's going to explain a way of life that everything is based on unconditional love. That's how you shift your life. Of all the things I share with people, is that it's not mediumship, it's not talking to spirits. I don't even talk to my ones on the crossover. They have actually helped me with things, but um, I don't, I don't, I don't give them, or they don't give me insight. I actually give it to them. They're still the same. You can get connected to people on the other side, and their level of wisdom, whatever you demonstrated here, that's who you are on the other side. There's no difference. You don't become all wise. What you do do is that you don't think. You don't have a brain to turn to. Your spirit doesn't turn to your brain and go, "Hey, what do you think?" It's gone. And if that's your source of wisdom in life, you just lost your source of wisdom. <laughs> you just lost where all your guidance came from. And that's why a lot of times I'll see spirits and they'll walk around in such a way and they just look confused. Yeah? Can you talk a little bit more about what you mean by shifting your spirit forward? Yeah. When you quiet, when you quiet your brain, what happens is that, remember what happens, what causes you to quiet your brain? So when you quiet your brain, that's your spirit. So what you're doing is that you're getting back to who you really are. Mm -hmm. And when you start to do that, the first thing that you want to do is start to pay attention to two different communications. So the way that you think, the way knowledge comes to you, and the way that knowledge comes to your spirit is two different ways. Start to pay attention about being inspired with knowledge, and this is where you start your progression, your expansion. 
You start with your own process of showing faith and trust and courage in that knowledge. Start to keep a journal. Start to keep a book. Start to write. Every single day, show your faith. If you don't show your faith every single day, you can't lie to God. You can't lie to that higher wisdom. Oh, yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I put the effort in. And you really did. It doesn't work. But when you do this every single day, you start to pay attention. You start to become aware. You also start to push away your brain and go, I don't. I'm not interested in what you have to say anymore. Now, here's what happens. What happens? You get back into your natural alignment. This is where your co-partnership with God and the higher wisdom starts to get connected. Your natural alignment is your spirit first. Your spirit then it only receives knowledge that's based on the truth. There's no such thing as lying or non-truth when it comes to spirit communication. It's just the truth. It always is. The only time we lie about things is when we mentally seek something. And we're not getting what we want. So then we change our words and we come across forceful with our voice or you know the way our presence is because your brain is trying to show control. But when your spirit's first, your spirit is open in a loving way and being grateful to any knowledge that comes to it. And in that way, your brain's second. And now your brain's not thinking because you're not asking your brain to think. You're using the interpretation of your spirit. And when your brain's quiet, like if you go to sleep at night or right before you're sleeping or in your dreams or after your dreams, when your brain's quiet, that's when the knowledge gets shared to your brain. And so when your brain's in this quiet state, your spirit and your brain starts to work in harmony together. Your brain then turns to your spirit and says, tell me what you see. It's going, oh great, I see this. And I'm getting connected to this. And images and visions get created into a still brain. <coughs> and those images and words and feelings, and sense, they all have meaning. And the more you pay attention to them and you realize that's your real communication of your spirit, it grows, it expands. You get better at understanding the interpretation of what it's trying to tell you. This is the evolution of your spirit. We're going to spend the rest of our physical lifetime developing this, this language. We're going to grow. This is being spiritual. This is showing a sincere, willful effort in your own life of being spiritual. You're actually doing something with your spirit. And so as you're starting to show faith in that knowledge and all kinds of visions and Pictures get formed inside of your head and your brain's quiet. You're in a state of peace, which is your spirit. Now you walk through life in this peaceful state. You're not worried about impressing other people or what you can get from other people. You're realizing you're empowering yourself and you're going, I'm going to do it. And when your brain is quiet, anything that your brain communicates, your body receives. So when your brain's quiet, your body's less stressed. When your brain's quiet and you're in a state of peace, it's more relaxed. You, your blood pressure goes down. The communication starts happening in such a way where your body actually gets healthier. The hormones get balanced. Everything gets stabilized. Now your spirit gets to live in a peaceful body. And that's the full circle of the natural alignment. When we're in the non-natural alignment, our brain's first, our body's second, our spirit's last. We become spiritually weak. We're using the interpretation coming from our head, and we're going, how come it's benefiting our life? Nobody's ever taught us this well. Your mind is the common, is the harmony between your spirit being first, your brain being second, and there's harmony, there's an exchange of information because they're working together. And when they work together, just like when we were born, that's our, that's our goal. Our goal is to make that happen every single day. Remember, it's an independent journey, too. You focus on your own life, and I promise you, any time you feel compelled in a loving way to communicate with someone else, you're going to add to their life. Any time, as long as you focus on your own life, no matter what you do, it's going to encompass anything that you touch around you and you're going to add to their life. Like, for instance, like, I might want to make a certain kind of dinner, but I can feel like I'm being guided to do it. I can feel like I'm supposed to do it. And then all of a sudden, I'll make extra for Michelle and Courtney, my daughter, and they'll go, oh my God, we were craving that today. Or I was thinking about the same exact thing. People call that right there, that's a way of life that everybody is now going to share in a common experience. We're all going to be connected in a loving way. It's the coolest thing watching change happen. Watch how many times Michelle goes, the same thing was happening to me, I was thinking the same thing, same thing with my daughter. It's happened so many times now, it's a, it's a way of life for us. We all see the same thing, we all agree upon the same thing. I've never had that in my life. In what way has your daughter been your teacher? And what are some of the qualities that she expresses that have been Nourishing through your own journey. How's my daughter been my teacher? <coughs> Anybody 
at any given time, because we have a spirit, can speak God, can speak higher wisdom, can speak in a loving way. Remember, everybody is spiritually equal. And so when you look at everybody as spiritually equal, you always allow people to speak. Even the dull and the ignorant, or even the people that might not have the greatest wisdom at all, at any given time, this insightful words can come out of your mouth that's going to empower you or inspire you. So in that way, not only Courtney, but Michelle too. You, anybody else, I listen. I listen and just pick up on the essence of what you're trying to communicate. But you asked specifically about your daughter's growth. About my daughter's what? Growth. Growth. How has it affected my daughter's growth? No, actually, I asked about that. It's different. Yeah. It's different than what you're saying. Yeah, I'm coming from a place where a lot of these young people coming in are just pure. Um, and they're teachers. And so my question was a curiosity about your daughter and the way in which she's been a teacher. She's actually a teacher in life, first of all. Yes. So she's actually a teacher in life because she's 25 years old. I can tell you my influence in her when she was younger. I didn't have the wisdom that I feel like I do now. And so her insight about life is based on that lack of wisdom on my end. And so, like I said, at any given time, people can speak higher wisdom, but how we're influenced in life, remember, love is an experience. It's something you feel, it's something you become a part of. If somebody acts in an unloving way towards us, we learn to be unloving to ourselves. We learn to self-destruct our own life. We learn to do drugs and alcohol and go in other directions. If we're loving to someone, if someone's loving to ourselves, if, if we're being spiritually helped all throughout our life, we learn to do that to ourselves. Remember, it's an experience. It's something that we absorb. It's something that our spirit becomes a part of. So inside of that way, when my, when my daughter's growing up and my wisdom changed, that wisdom had an influence on her life. It also inspired her to start to do the same exact thing. So now I always turn to her for her insight to see if it matches the insight that I have. So I think it's not about one person being wiser than the other. I think it's about listening to one another and just seeing who speaks the most wisdom and then going in that direction. Then it always stays in an equal way. So I never look at it, she's my, I can't even say my daughter, it bothers me. Or even Michelle, I can't call her my wife because that shows a possession. And I know we're all equal inside of the house. But she also has the spirit. Because remember, get away from the labels. We're all just a separate spirit. When we first started, there was no human attachment whatsoever. There was no names. It's the only difference between us is our level of wisdom, goodness, and love inside of us. That's all it is. The more wisdom we have, the more people want us to speak, and the more help that we give to one another. That's why it's important. And again, it's not your wisdom, it's always connected to to a higher degree. So Questions? where does love reside for you? So love is communication, like I was saying earlier. So love is the experience. Love. When you love, where do you feel that in your body? When you love, you feel it through your spirit. Everything is done with your spirit. But you're putting your hands on your heart. So Center of your my eyes. spirit. This is my spirit too. This is my spirit. My fingers are my spirit. I'm just sitting in the center. That's all it is. People refer to the heart all the time. There's nothing wrong with that. Call it your heart. But I'm just sharing with you that it's not a physical thing. Well, it's an essence. It's not a physical thing, but that I your, don't feel love with my head. You feel love here? I feel knowledge up there. I feel you know, imagination, creativity. I don't feel love for you my head. Correct. Isn't it cool? Because you're, when you're mentally centered, you don't feel love. But love is from the heart. Well, love from your center of your spirit. Because when you cross over and you don't have a heart, you still have love. Right? Love. love. If you cross over and you're spirit, you can't feel love. God. Do you believe in a higher wisdom? Do you believe in angels? They don't have a heart. They don't have a physical nothing. But they're full of love, yes. I love you. I've never experienced angels. Have you experienced any, have you experienced a higher wisdom? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Does that higher wisdom have a heart, or have lungs, or have a brain? It's not about that, no. It's like, but God's invisible. <laughs> My point is, it's love. It's a source of love. But from me to another person, you to your daughter, you to your wife. A spirit. Not a physical brain, not a physical body, a spirit. We're not talking physical. The energy of love. Where do you find that energy of love? Center of your spirit. To make sure it's everywhere, in every cell, every... It is. Space. And I think that, and again, when, when, that's what I'm trying to share with you people, handle. that you can say hard, you, you can, can say, it doesn't matter. It's all based on love. And when we cross over and we don't have anything physical connected to us, it's still love. It's because that's what it always is. 
When you talk about if you believe in there's angels or you believe in there's God, there's no such thing as this. We, we get away from the human connection. They're based on love, unconditional love. That's all it is. So the most important. Can you repeat the question? I didn't hear it. Has, has, has I have any formal training to hone my skills? And I said zero. I've never been to a class, I've never been certified in anything, I've never had a mentor or somebody <coughs> teaching me. Sorry, I don't know. An anatomy class or something? Never went to an anatomy class. I looked up anatomy on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> That's a dumb reason. People tell me this one. What are you going to be People have names. Human experience, the human existence has names. Our body has a name. And so inside of that way, when spirits talk to you on the other side, your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, when they cross over, remember, they don't think. They don't have a brain to turn to anymore. They're an energy. That's where they started from. So they have this energy, so they share with me images so that I can relate it to you. They'll share me an image of themselves. Maybe if they died when they're 80, they might show me when they're 50 or 60. If someone died as an infant, they might actually show me them dying at a very, very young age. If someone committed suicide, they might show me the details of why they committed suicide. But at the same time, somebody who died, again, in their 80s or 90s, they might show me them when they're 60 years old. As long as I understand what they're saying, that's all that matters to them. But remember, previously, previously, they might have been in a different body with a whole different name, with a whole different kind of experiences. But if I'm going to satisfy someone's need, a spiritual need to hear from the spirit that was connected to their father when they were here in his lifetime, that's the image of it. 